One million years of election is out in front of us, and as the 2024 election comes our way, make sure to subscribe uh, to the right candidates' platform and proposals. Yes, it's the anyone but Biden 2024 merch line. It's available now at stewdoesmerch.com. Use the code STU10 to save 10%. If you're watching on YouTube, like the video right now. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Do all the things we ask you to do every single day. We appreciate it. Uh, and let me ask you this. Doesn't every day seem a little scarier and a little more left than the day before? It's not just you. So let's dive into all the ways they're trying to take our country away. As we do today, the left's utopia. And I think that's one thing that we do often, right? There's so many crazy news stories. We don't step back and think, what are these things going to? What are they pointing to? What does this country look like if the left gets their way? It's a scary thought, isn't it? Let me give you just a few examples. Instead of just, and this is just from this week. I'm not going to go back to three, six months ago. Let's just go to this week and understand what has been going on in this country. Starting off with uh, Christian leaders objecting to VP Harris's claim that they don't have to abandon faith to support abortion. Did you catch this clip earlier this week? Listen to Kamala Harris try to do this weird end around on religion uh, so you can justify aborting children. And I think on this issue, it's really important to also just remember you don't have to abandon your faith or your deeply held beliefs to agree that the government should not be telling a woman what to do. Can you, this, I guess it's just gaslighting, I don't know, but can you believe that Kamala Harris would say something like that? She doesn't want the government involved in this. Is this the one thing? Do they just turn on the libertarian switch for this eight minutes a day when they're talking about abortion? Whenever they bring it up, they all of a sudden turn into the most libertarian people in the world. They don't want government involved in anything. These are decisions all right, made between the doctors and the patients. Uh, did, did you think we forgot about the last three years? I don't know if you know this, but since around 2020, nobody buys this argument anymore. Nobody buys that you think decisions made about personal health care should be made between the patient and the doctor. Because if the doctor says they don't want to take the vaccine, if the doctor says, actually, it's OK for you to go to work because you're not really vulnerable to COVID. If uh, the doctor and the patient say, you know what, I think actually I'm going to go to my gym inside or dine inside. You ripped all of those rights away to say that the government absolutely has a right to get in the middle of a person and their health care. Not to mention, of course, things like Obamacare and all of the restrictions put on health care by the government in the first place. I mean, this is obviously absurd. And of course, it's hard to sit back and just take it, though I guess that's what we're supposed to do. And yet, while all this is going on, while our side of the argument is saying, uh, hey, do you guys mind, like, uh, not killing children? Like, is that, a, is that can we can we just agree on that. Well, we're saying that, of course, pop culture going the exact opposite way. Demi Lovato dropped a pro-choice song called Swine on the one year anniversary of Roe vs. Wade's return. Now, I will say, if I was about to show you an actual abortion in process, I would I would warn you uh, that you should, you know, if you have kids in the room, you shouldn't watch this. Maybe it'd be a little too disturbing. This song is worse than if I showed you an actual abortion in process. It could be the single worst song ever recorded, but I will play you some of it because, I don't know, just to prove to you it exists. Oh, exactly. I, no. It's so bad. <laughs> I built that up in my head. I was like, it says, this clip says 51 seconds on this card. 51 seconds of that song was what I was supposed to play. I. I, th I said to them, I'm like, I'm never going to get through 51 seconds. I didn't even get through five seconds. But she goes on to just argue and blab and blab and blab about, here's some of the lyrics. Um, my life, my voice, my right, my choice. It's mine or I'm just swine. I mean, d look, Demi Lovato's a moron. Uh, and this has been known for quite some time. But the idea that the angsty side of this is the side that says we should have the right to end the children's lives. The people who want the kids to be alive aren't the ones being angry about this. They're not saying, hey, guys, like, I'm a little upset that you want to, 
you know, 63 million people should be alive today that aren't. Like, I, I don't know. Like, maybe can we stop doing that? I, I mean, we did, we did just have a 3% drop. By the way, 3%. That's been the effect so far of the Roe versus Wade uh, overturn. 3% drop in abortions nationwide. And I know that's a real inconvenience to everyone. Uh, we all want to have the right to kill our children. But I don't know. Maybe... Maybe the side that should be angry is the one fighting for the lives of the children and the ones that want to kill all the children shouldn't be so upset about the 3% drive. I don't know. I mean, I know it's a wild, wild thing. Remember, by the way, that everybody in the media, everybody on the left, all the politicians on the left sold this to you as if it was going to be the handmaid's tale. In the brief five-second video that you just watched of Demi Lovato's horrible song, you got those same vibes. This is women have no rights. It's impossible for women to have a voice. They don't have a choice. Blah, 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 blah. Um, guys, it was a 3% drop. Can we get over ourselves a little bit? I, look, I'm happy that there was a 3% drop. Why? Well, because that means, I don't know, let's see, a million kids, 30,000 kids born that wouldn't otherwise have been born. 30,000 people are alive today. Maybe 40,000 people are alive today, depending on which estimates you look at. The estimates may be as high as 60 or 70,000 this year. That's really good. And the fact that, you know, I can't think of any other government policies, all the crap they're doing in Washington, all the trillions of dollars they spend, doesn't seem to often come back by saving 70,000 lives. So I'm, uh, as much as I would like it to be 100%, 3, 4, 5%, I'll take anything I can get. These are people who are alive today that otherwise would not be. Uh, but if you're on the other side of this argument and you want to be able to abort your kids on demand whenever you can, Really available. 97% of abortions still happened last year. So, anyway, by the way, uh, 62422, the merch is available at studosmerch.com. If you care about this issue, it's a nice way to remind people without having to, uh, I don't know, put a fetus on your shirt. So, uh, fetus shirts don't sell very well. 62422 merch, pretty good. Studosmerch.com, code is stu10. Now, while all the abortion stuff is going on, the total culture of death that goes along with that, we have... Pride, in effect. We're almost to the end of Pride Month. You've almost made it. Congratulations. Uh, you, you're still alive. I don't know how it's happened. Washington Democrats are silent, however, on Pride cyclists exposing their genitalia to a crowd, including kids and families. Uh, we will, uh, let's show you a clip of this. And uh, we got some nice uh, robot material here. Which is nice. and I will say, there's genitals all over the place. You pretty much have to just blur this whole thing. It is interesting because I feel like if I took my bike down the road naked, I would just get arrested. Here there are thousands of cops all around, thousands of people, including children all around, and it's totally fine. If you're a fan of uh, Nathan For You, you remember he did a uh, The Claw of Shame, uh, in which uh, the end of it was if he did not succeed in letting himself out of this lock, children would be exposed to him and he would get arrested for it. Apparently, that, that, that bit doesn't work anymore because you could just go out and just let them all, let your, uh, your giblets just bounce around wherever you want. No one seems to care all that much. Really, really bizarre and really incredible when you come to think about it. Uh, New York City drag marchers chant this. Yes, we are coming for your children during a Pride event. Do you think I'm lying about this? Probably, if you haven't seen the clip. Again, these are all from just this week. Here you go. Watch. I hope there's not a shortage of uh, blurred boxes because we may be using our, uh, our, our maximum here. Uh, you know, okay, we're here, we're queer, we're coming for your children. I guess the best look at this is they're being sarcastic, right? They're just saying, oh, well, you guys keep thinking we're coming for your children, so we're just going to embrace it, you know? Ha, ha, ha. Maybe that's it. I know a lot of parents are not going to take it that way. Uh, and I will say there's been a lot of news lately that makes me think at least some people in the uh, community uh, are not uh, taking it as a joke. Uh, that being said, uh, if you happen to be a group who's trying to win over the hearts and souls of Americans... Probably not a good idea to chant we're coming for your children.
just as a tactic, bad idea. If you look back at the gay rights movement, which was largely successful uh, over the past uh, couple of decades, you know, gay marriage has gone from something that was 10, 15 percent in the 90s, uh, 10 percent approval has gone up to, you know, something like 70 or 80 percent today. It has gone a long way. And the ways that they did that were pretty, pretty simple, right? They said, well, um, you know, this, this has nothing to do with you. It's my choice and I get to do it. It's not affecting you. Well, when you say, hey, we're coming for your children, that is affecting us. That is affecting people who are sitting here with children. That, that's not a thing that's like, oh, well, it's just our decision. Don't worry about it. Um, and a lot of that, you know, victory was made sort of on a libertarian basis. I think the country as a whole doesn't want people to, to make judgments on other people or at least doesn't want to uh, ban their lifestyle or make their lifestyle go out of style. So what happens? Um, you know, you make a good argument. You, you, uh, you appeal to people uh, who have a sense of personal individual freedom and maybe you get what you want. Saying you're coming after your children, you might think it's hilarious as you're hammered walking down the street in a parade, but I assure you that's not helping. It's not helping. Maybe less coming for the children from the movement would be good. By the way, if you're wondering how Bud Light was doing in this particular scenario, Bud Light slammed for sponsoring Toronto Pride. They deserve to go broke. By the way, here is uh, the footage of that. A uh, big Bud Light ad seen at the parade. Uh, you know, again, another blurred box. Again, th 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 wait, this isn't sexual at all. Everyone's naked everywhere all the time. And there's the big Bud Light sign. Oh, that's so nice. Good job, guys. Oh, they're doing a great, great job. Okay, but how does the government react to this? Because this is all cultural stuff, mostly. How does the government react to this stuff? What do they do? What is their vision of the left's utopia that we look forward to. Well, Rachel Levine has declared this the summer of pride. Here are her, his, their, its comments. You know, it, it's, it's so, it's such an important issue for our youth and adults. As you said, some of these laws are actually extending in, into adulthood. You know, we often say that gender affirming care is health care. Gender affirming care is mental health care. And gender affirming care is literally suicide prevention care. This is, you know, it's funny because we're here, we're queer, we're coming for your family. It's really easy to get angry about that, right? It's understandable. Um, they're saying something horrible, and it's understandable to get angry at that. But I would argue that this is more devious. And the reason I say that is because this is a, an argument that would appeal to a, a, to a family, to a mother. It's not we're coming for your children. That's going to make turn everybody off. The Rachel Levine argument is a more serious argument. It's an argument where they say, your kid's gonna die if you don't do this. Your kid is going to die. They go to parents all the time and they tell them that their child is going to kill themselves if they don't become a trans activist. That is disgusting in so many ways. I mean, you think about your child for a second. If a doctor came to you and said, hey, we need to, uh, you know, we need to, uh, you know, they need to have this uh, cancer treatment or they're going to die. Even if you are a little conflicted about the cancer treatment, you're likely to go forward with it because if you don't, you know you're responsible for your child's death. And that's what they're threatening these parents of trans kids with. Kids come and they get, you know, they, they're on TikTok for 65 hours a day and they decide all of a sudden that they're a squirrel or a dolphin or whatever else. And the doctor, the doctor that you trust with your child's health comes back to you and says, hey, by the way, if you don't let your kid be a dolphin, it's gonna, your, your dolphin child is going to kill itself. You love your kid. You don't want your kid to kill themselves. You, don't, you walk away for 10 seconds and they do something terrible. You don't want that to happen. So you're so much more likely. This is like, you know, we, we, we think about this all the time when we have tough decisions to make. I'll often uh, propose those things. If you've got a gun to your head, what are you going to do? This is what they're doing to parents. They're saying, hey, I don't know, you know, you might not like the trans stuff, but your kid might kill themselves. Gun to your head, which one do you pick? Well, of course a parent, a lot of times, is going to be like, I don't want this to happen, but, like, I don't want my kid to kill themselves. It's really hard for a parent to have the moral strength and the moral clarity to be able to pull the right lever in that scenario. It's disgusting what they're doing to these parents. And children, of course. Uh, Xavier Becerra, he calls for the HHS to go on offense on gay rights. This is another, again, a lot of this stuff is fueled by threats. Threats your kid might kill themselves. Here's a threat directly from the government. Watch. We have issued some guidelines that say that uh, a provider who receives Medicare funding, Medicaid funding, 
must be prepared to offer gender-affirming care. We unfortunately ran into a couple of circuit courts uh, that said differently, and so we are now in the process of having to uh, work under those rulings. Uh, but we're not going to stop everywhere where we have an opportunity at the federal level. And again, I go back to yesterday's conversation where we don't control health care. We don't control how gender affirming care is provided or if it is provided. But where we have laws that require you to fulfill your obligations, if you want that Medicaid dollar to come to your state, we're going to make sure you check the box. Mm, so important to check boxes. That's America for you. By the way, this was explicitly, I would argue, uh, ruled unconstitutional uh, in the Obamacare case, which, by the way, was a ruling I thought was terrible. But they came out and they said, you can't put a gun to the heads of these states to go along with your games and, and pull these dollars away uh, in this sort of explicit trade for some big policy proposal that you want to pass through. Uh, the, the the Supreme Court said you can't do that in the Obamacare case. Here's Becerra basically admitting this is exactly what they're doing. Hopefully some uh, wonderful attorney general in some good state will actually take them to task for that and stop it. But this is what they intend to do. It's by force if needed. Go ahead. Look, Barack Obama had the best um, uh, summary of the left's mindset on this stuff. They want to create their utopia. How do they create it? Well, look, everything will be fine. We want bipartisanship. As long as you agree with us. If you agree with us, we want the bipartisanship. We want you to vote for the things that we want. However, if you disagree with us, well, then we have to do what we have to do. Because, look, these people are always in our way. These people are messing everything up. They're always in the way. Let me uh, end it with this from New York. This is, uh, this is a guy. He's a New Yorker. It may be very difficult for you to detect that he's a New Yorker by his accent. It's very, very tough. But he's a, an artist in uh, New York. And uh, he's looking at this, and he's seeing many of the same things that we're talking about here. Um, and, of course, he also adds on the big uh, story from this week that New York may be cracking down on coal and wood-fired pizza ovens. Now, there's nothing more sacred in New York than the pizza. It's, I still, I, some people don't like it. Some people like Chicago style better, other, Detroit. I love the New York stuff. New York and New Haven is where it's at for me. The pizza is incredible. And to take away this is like take away the core of what New York City is. Like every good thing about New York City revolves around pizza. Everything else is just like people defecating in the streets. But pizza is pizza. Uh, this particular New York uh, artist decided he was not going to take that lying down. The woke ass idiots who run this city are doing everything in their power to destroy it. We have naked men with their bouncing around all over the city yesterday in public in front of children we have the most violent raging crime rate ever we are being invaded by illegal immigrants who are being treated way better than our homeless veterans our teachers and first responder heroes who were fired still not compensated because they didn't take the Fauci injection. Our city schools produce the dumbest kids, and the woke-ass punks who run New York City are afraid of pizza? The world used to respect New Yorkers as tough, thick-skinned, and gritty. Now we have become fight. It's a damn shame. You heard of the Boston Tea Party? Well, this is the Boston, New York, this is the New York Pizza Party. Give us pizza or give us death. Uh, I was throwing, uh, give us pizza or give us death. He's throwing the pizza across uh, the fence. And give I will say this. Pizza. I agreed with much of his rant here. It physically hurts me to see that pizza, give which looks pizza. really good, flying across. Across and landing in the streets. That just that looks absolutely delicious. I need a New York pizza. The point here is that all of this stuff is leading toward some vision of what America will become. Some vision for you, for your kids, for your relatives, for your friends. And that vision, when you kind of string this stuff together and look at the direction we're going and where this might end up, should scare the hell out of you, especially if you're a parent or a grandparent. The country that, this, that, we were, that was founded here, that gave us these freedoms, has decided to blow itself up in this sort of you know, self-immolation strategy that I, we can't take sitting down. And if it takes throwing what looks like a delicious pizza over a fence to prove that point, I guess we have to be for it.
You know, one of the things I like about GenuCell is they're always hooking you up. They've always tried, they're always trying to find a way for you to try their great products. I've, uh, you know, friends and relatives uh, that we've not only uh, buy, they buy GenuCell themselves, but also I've given them GenuCell as gifts before. It's a great gift. And now they've extended the most popular package sale they've got going on. This features beautifully curated skincare essentials for life outside in the summer sun. GenuCell's limited time summer essentials package includes their one of a kind ultra retinol super moisturizer with a powerful plant extract retinol alternative that delivers results without the harsh side effects. I mean, look, I'll just I'll cut out all the uh, really fancy stuff that they talk about. Just tell you it's the best in skincare. Your skin is important. If you're not taking care of it, especially now, uh, you really need to make a move on that. Go to GenuCell.com slash stew. Right now, get your GenuCell Summer Essentials Package right now for over 65% off. And for the summer, every subscription order includes a customized summer spa box absolutely free. And for one more week, every Summer Essentials Package includes their nourishing vitamin C serum for visibly clear complexion. Don't wait. Go to GenuCell.com slash stew. GenuCell.com slash stew. It's G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash stew. I'm joined once again by Rob Eno. He's Blaze TV's resident media critic. And there's been a lot of media stuff going on. I was talking yesterday about this coverage of the Hunter Biden situation. Like, it seems like there are reporters doing their jobs a little bit on this. CBS ran a big package about Hunter Biden and, and went into interviewed the guy, the IRS whistleblower, treated him with respect, showed the evidence that he was claiming. Um, you saw this at the White House press conference with Corinne Jean-Pierre, like a five minute segment of people just berating her with questions about this and not letting her get away with her typical dismissive responses. What's going on here? Is the media waking up? I, I think that you get to a point where the media doesn't want to be made a fool, right? Mm. They, they will carry your water until it's so blatant mm. that they have to not. And when it was just James Comer with bank records and doing that, but when you get IRS employees, multiple, like there were six, right? Mm. IRS employees that come out and say, no, yeah. this is what happened. I think that they take it seriously. And those WhatsApp messages, there was a non-Fox reporter in a gaggle this morning that asked Joe Biden, so were you in the room when he was shaking down the yeah. Chinese? And he's like, no, no, no. Like, like he, he went like yeah. he, he's getting frustrated. The New York Times in paragraph 21 of a story, we have it up at the, the Blaze. Um, we had it up yesterday at the Blaze. And on page 21 or, or paragraph 21, they actually admitted that Merrick Garland lied under oath about giving the, the, the prosecutor in Delaware the ability to prosecute because they, they talked to people at the Justice Department that said no, he tried to get two prosecutions done and the Justice Department said no. Mm, that's really interesting. Yeah, like they're starting to report it because I think they know that stuff is gonna come out. I mean, th this is gonna get to the point where decisions are gonna have to be made. Joe, Joe Biden will be impeached. But the decisions have to be made are the Democrats mm. with overwhelming evidence. Like there wasn't overwhelming evidence. There, there was some overwhelming evidence in the Bill Clinton impeachment, but it was more a slap on the wrist because, you know, you did something and, and, and it was a little bit political. The Trump impeachments have been political. You weren't going to get them to do that. But if there is verifiable proof that Joe Biden sold the offices of, or sold his office in the United States for monetary gain. And, and there's. It just you can't deny it. Yeah. Democrats are going to have to make a Rick, Richard Nixon type, mm. type decision here. Yeah. And um, if it continues to go on, it's going to be a very interesting like next three months. I think one of the interesting things about the last few weeks, too, has been because, as you point out, legalistically, you need the bank records. You need right. to have all of this. And, and that's important. It's, it's incredibly important. Or you can't prove that the money actually took place. But what connects to the American people are the WhatsApp messages. Right. right. Because I, you read the stuff from back in the day. Oh, 10 percent for the big guy. Everyone knows when they're on email that that stuff might wind up in a court of law. Everyone realizes when they're on text. I think there's a different line with WhatsApp and uh, other encrypted messages uh, platforms where people let loose. They think this stuff is going to disappear. Oh, it's encrypted. It's so, encrypted. Yeah. Right. It's going to go away. I'm sure Telegram and Signal are like this as well, where people are more inspired to just kind of say it. 
Right. And now people are seeing Hunter Biden in his, say, in his own voice describing everything we've accused him of. Yeah. It's incredible that this is going and on. It's hard to ignore. Mm. It's hard. And, and remember, these came from the, F, from the IRS. These didn't come from a Republican yeah. fishing expedition or from the laptop or any of that stuff. These came from IRS agents. Yeah, really. And that's what's, I think that that's, the, the media believes the administrative state people, right? They, they believe people that work for the government that have for a long time because they know that those are the people that actually run the government. Mm -hmm. And if they don't believe them, then everything that they've tried to prop up for the past 50 years is a lie, right? So you've got to believe the people that work for the government. And these are not, you know, not fans of, Hunt, of Joe Biden. These are not like, you know, crazy right-wing Republicans saying this. These are lifelong administrative yeah. state employees. Um, let me run this theory by you. Uh, part of the, what we're seeing now with from the media, and I think if this turns into a real issue for, for uh, Joe Biden in the future, will be based on the fact that the media is making a calculation and saying, holy crap, Joe Biden might lose. And if enough people in the mainstream media come up with that internal fear that he might lose to Donald Trump or even Ron DeSantis or somebody else, they will start turning up the heat in this investigation to get him out before it's too late. Something like Gavin Newsom or something like that that I think is the, the savior. Yeah, I, I, I completely get that. But let's go back to this. Um, before Glenn, I mean, where did Glenn get most of his information about the Hunter Biden stuff? From the New York Times, from all of these places mm. that ran these stories before Joe Biden was even going to run for president, right? And then as soon as he goes to run for, oh, well, well, well you know, we didn't really mean, I, you get that from yeah, us? Right, yeah. like, I don't it was remember like, that. It was, like, it was like the spying. It was like the FBI, you know, not wiretapping, but spying on the Trump campaign with the Hillary Clinton stuff. You know, people ask Mark Levin, well, where'd you get, I, I got it from you. Yeah. Like, you wrote this story on this date and on this date and on this date and on this date. And when you take them all together, it paints what I just said. I didn't get this out of whole, you know, right. from nowhere. You know, they, the, the whole China stuff was a, a New York Times expose, I think, like two years and said Joe Biden's going to have problems because his son is taking money from China. Like, like they wrote this. Yeah. And that's a big thing because they, when they don't think about this stuff, they, they, they will cover the news right. until it's too important for them. That's why I think there's something to this theory of them wanting to switch this out because eventually it becomes their political future, what they want for the country, and that might inspire them. Also, I do think, though, you pointed out embarrassment is a big factor as well. Um, we only got a couple minutes here, but let me, let me switch over to Fox News. Okay. They announced their new lineup. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of people I like over at Fox News. This did just seem like they were just sliding people around. I mean, uh, they didn't. It seemed like they didn't come up with anything new here. No, they didn't come up with anything new. It's going to be. I mean, it, does Jesse Waters have the ability to carry a show on his own? We'll see. I mean, that, I mean that, that's he, like the super prime time slot, right? Eight, sure. 8 p.m. He used to work in that time slot. He used to work for um, for O'Reilly. O'Reilly, yeah. So, yeah, so he, he worked for that time slot. It's going to be interesting to see. I think that they they just don't know what to do. With Tucker gone, I mean, it's starting to come back. The, the ratings are starting to come back. I this was, was always going to go. Um, it's going to be really interesting, though. I mean, Tucker had another show yesterday. He is like you. I did notice he wears the same shirt. Oh, really? Every single. <laughs> I, I just went back and looked at all seven of them. He doesn't wear the same tie, but he got the same coat and the same oh, exact shirt. On. Tucker, you got to catch up. You got to wear the same everything every yeah. single day. That way, you know, you, you, no one ever knows what. It could be six months ago, and you're doing a show, and people don't even know it. Um, so they moved. Into Tucker's slot, they moved Jesse Waters. So Waters was in front of, he was at seven, they moved him to eight, right? Right. Then they moved Laura Ingram, who was on at nine to... Or ten or whatever. Ten yeah, yeah. to... I, I, Hannity's the only one staying the same. He's they staying basically, at they're nine. Moving everybody around. got filled at ten. Yep. I mean, to go up against Normal World, I don't know if that's a smart thing. I know, it's You know, they're going up against Blaze TV's Normal World. Yeah. Might not be a smart thing, but... Yeah, no, it's 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 interesting. I mean, Gut, Gutfeld's a late night guy. He, I think he was like at eleven or, or whatever. So they've moved him a little bit earlier, um, which is probably good for the Fox audience. Mm -hmm. They won't have to watch him on DVR. Mm -hmm. Be able to stay up until ten to watch him. Um, so you know, it's it's going to be really interesting. I think they just kind of moved. I don't want to say they moved deck chairs on the Titanic. I know. Kind of, you know. It's kind of negative. They moved some deck chairs. Um, may or may not be the Titanic, but I mean, as as we know, linear television is a dying breed. Um, so, you know, it really doesn't matter what time people are on. Most people watch it by a DVR anyways. And I think that that's why Tucker is going to have great success wherever he ends up. I don't think, I don't think Twitter is the final place that Tucker's going to end up, right? I think that, that, that Tucker's at Twitter now 
because he's like, oh no, this is just my social media, man. I'm just making cool internet videos. And you know, my contract says I can make cool internet videos. So mm -hmm. I'm making cool internet videos. Gives him a little bit of an out. A little bit out. I think that that's what, I mean, they're, they're Fox Super Fox is not Bowl accepting produced. that out, by the way. No, yeah, they're not accepting mm -hmm. that out. Um, but I mean, he's got good lawyers. They'll come to a monetary settlement, and you'd think they don't get it done. You would think they um, they fired Fox fired the entire staff. The enti well, nope, not yet. Not yet. They're not. They, in, in order to get the cool severance, you have to stay and work at the place that hates you for like another week and a half until they're ready to move Jesse Waters into the eight. Oh, okay. Show. I'm sorry. So they still have to produce that show where they may or may not have been doing some fun things um, with like the teleprompter and tripping up posts. So it's kind of, <laughs> forget exactly what one was, but they like said that Biden said something that didn't. And I'm sure that that was one of those guys like, <laughs> yeah. screwing with the teleprompter, right? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, look, it, uh, it's, it's, it's a bizarre situation. Hopefully some of those people just hook up with, uh, with Tucker for his new show. Uh, Rob Eno, a resident media critic right here at Blaze TV. Thanks so much for uh, coming back on the program and walking us uh, through this. It's gonna be an interesting uh, next year. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. All right, back in a second. You want to make sure that you have the best people on any job that you're uh, trying to do. If you're trying to accomplish, you're building a house, you're, got a, you're flying a plane, you want to make sure you have the best pilot, you have the best builder. This is the same thing that comes with a real estate agent. If you don't have a good real estate agent, you're missing out on really important details. Maybe the best price. Maybe someone doesn't know how to market your house as well as another agent. Why deal with someone who's inferior at a job that's really, really important to you? You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars here. Hundreds of thousands of dollars when you're talking uh, buying and selling a house. You don't risk that to some person you barely know or someone you saw on a random internet ad. Instead, go with someone who has actually been screened and been screened by the great people over at realestateagentsitrust.com. They know what they're doing. They've looked at results. They've looked at uh, you know, the, the people who really have the integrity to hold your house purchase or sale to the highest standard. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. The name kind of says it all. Check it out now. It's a free service for you. realestateagentsitrust.com. It's realestateagentsitrust.com. We are a country divided, and it's really hard to bring people together. Uh, people don't agree on anything these days. With really one exception, nobody likes Kamala Harris. Uh, it's true. Uh, Kam Kamala Harris has a, a new record low for vice presidential net favorability. Now, she's at minus 17. Forty nine percent of respondents have a negative opinion of, of uh, Kamala Harris, while only 32 percent say they have a positive opinion of her. That's uh, opposed to, like, let's say Mike Pence, who was far from our most popular vice president. He was only minus four. 38% negative, uh, uh, yeah, 38% negative, 34% positive. Going all the way back since they've been taking this poll, Kamala ranks lowest, which is not exactly an entire, uh, entirely a shocking moment in our history, but it is, it is true. Also, not exactly shocking that the media sucks. Bill Maher has been railing against the New York Times and the rest of the media for hostile RFK Jr. coverage. He says, I'm pissed off, mainly because what he's saying is like, hey, just cover the guy. Let him say what he wants to say about vaccines and whether who, who killed his dad and, you know, all these other things. Let him say that stuff and then we can decipher what's real and what's not instead of not letting anyone hear from him. Now, his voice is so terrible that I don't think anyone wants to hear from him, but I'd like to at least read some quotes from the guy. Uh, one of the things that you, you see here is there's this debate going on in the media as to how to cover someone like RFK Jr., and whether you should give him something like a town hall. The, the, the media is scared of town halls after what happened with Trump and CNN. They don't like the fact that they looked like they lost that. And now News Nation, I think, is doing one with RFK Jr. Other media uh, organizations are being critical of that, saying you can't just let this guy spout uh, these you know, falsehoods. And you know, you have a, even if you have someone who's there trying to correct them, it doesn't work. It's different than, let's say, having a, uh, a an interview where you can take it apart and you know disprove these claims one by one. Again, this is the way they think about these things. It's true. I guess it is more easy for them to control the narrative when they do it that way. But isn't that the problem that they're trying to control the narrative? Let people make up their own minds, and we will have a country that has made decisions that it can hold itself responsible for instead of having a media that's constantly lying to them. <music> hey, 
Have you been given bad advice about your retirement savings? Were you told to max out your 401k and it didn't work out well for you? Uh, the Wall Street casino loves you to roll the dice with your hard-earned savings. And like a casino, you know, the house always wins in these situations. They get paid whether you win or you lose. There's a better way to grow your nest egg. It's Bank on Yourself. Bank on Yourself is a guaranteed and predictable retirement plan alternative that gives you 100% control of your money, plus tax-free income in retirement. There's no luck, skill, or guesswork required. Your plan doesn't go backward when the market tumble. Uh, you know, it goes down, and you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can grow your principal and uh, your growth can be locked in. Wouldn't it be nice to be protected from the tax tsunami in retirement? Bank on yourself is the strategy that famous businesses like McDonald's used when no banker would lend them a dime. This is built-in inflation protection and ultimate peace of mind for your retirement. Now get a free report with all the details on how the bank on yourself strategy adds guarantees, predictability, tax savings, and control to your financial plan. It's bankonyourself.com slash stew. Bankonyourself.com slash stew. Stu Eats America, we're today doing a ranking. We've got five brand new Kexi cookies available, I guess, at Kexi.com. You should go eat them. They're all always delicious, but I wanted to get a ranking. Which one's better? A cookie battle. Which one do I want to eat more than the others before I then, of course, inevitably eat all the rest of them anyway? We're going to go through and rank these. It gets you a perspective of which ones you should eat first when you get your giant box of Kexi cookies, which you should get at Kexi.com. All right. Here we go, strawberry, let's start with strawberry shortcake. What do you think? Now we've got a nice little cookie here. I'll give you a little piece of that, look at that. Oh yeah, there's a giant bunch of stuff jammed in there. Got some uh, red sort of uh, delicious red uh, sprinkles type of things up here. Some good uh, icing as well. I'm a big strawberry shortcake fan. I have a high, uh, I have some high expectations for this particular cookie. Let's give it a whirl, Kexi's strawberry shortcake. Oh man, that's good. That one I'm pretty excited about. Let's move on to taste test number two. We've got Almond Joy. Almond Joy. Yes, we've got the chocolate cookie with a, I would assume, a coconut uh, cream of sorts on the top. And a, a little, uh, I got a little uh, almond on there as well. Now, if you've ever had uh, Texas sheet cake cookies from Kexi Cookies, you probably know how delicious they are. This is gonna be great. Here we go, uh, Almond Joy. Hmm. Hmm. I did get a big taste of the icing, which was uh, which was very good. And I don't even say it's an icing; it's like a coconut filling almost on top of it. One more bite here. Nice. There are gonna be a lot of ants in the studio after this. Gun's gonna be pissed. So next up, I don't want to. I don't want to go chocolate chocolate back to back, and I don't want to go coconut coconut back to back. I have a little break in between those flavors, so I'm not getting them mixed up. So I'm gonna go directly to Grinch. Now, here's the Grinch cookie. We've sliced them in four, by the way, because they're impossible uh, to eat otherwise uh, in any way that you wanna have on camera. Like it's one thing, when you're at home with a box of Kexi, Kexi cookies, just jam them down your gullet and they're delicious. They might be all over the front of your shirt too. Here, I mean, I'll at least try to get you to continue to watch. Here we go, this is a a Grinch cookie. The poor Grinch's face has been sliced into quarters. Now inside, it looks like you got some chips in there, maybe some white chocolate chips and some regular chocolate chips inside. Let's give it a shot. What is a Grinch cookie? I have no freaking idea. Is it gonna taste like the f the flesh of, of a Grinch? Does it taste like if you were to like have a barbecue with the meat of Jim Carrey? I don't know. I, I don't think that's how they promote it though. Let me try. Here we go, Grinch cookie from Kexi Cookies. Hmm. Irish cream cookie. Got a chocolate cookie, looks like. Uh, inside, ooh, some white chocolate chips. Um, this is delicious. Here we go. Uh, a uh, An Irish cookie, an Irish cream cookie from Kexi. Hmm. That's really good, too. These are all really good. Here we go. Last one. This is the... Coconut eggs nest. I guess kind of like a, uh, I don't know, let's see, it's certainly a, a, an Easter sort of vibe here from this one. You've got uh, a coconut cookie. 
You've got uh, some chips in there, like it looks like a little chocolate, uh, whatever that's called on the top. Ganache, is that a word? And then uh, you got uh, a little robin's egg on the top. I'll give you a little cross section there, look at that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, let's give it a shot. Taxi cookies, uh, the coconut eggs nest. That's really good. Mm. Okay. In fifth place, I'm going to go with the Irish cream. The Irish cream cookie. It's a delicious cookie. If you're a big icing fan, you're going to like this uh, probably a little bit more than I do. Fourth place, I'm going to go the Grinch. The Grinch is a good cookie. I will say, uh, I, I, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I like it. It's a good cookie. Um, it is not like, a, you know, loaded with tons of toppings. It's got a nice, um, subtle taste. I did really like it. Um, but, you know, there's some big contenders in this one. And I got to say, it's, it's a hard choice to make. Fourth place, going with the Grinch. Third place, we're going Almond Joy. Almond Joy cookie, yes. Uh, they're delicious. I mean, a coconut. I, as you can tell, I'm a coconut guy. I do like the coconut stuff. But you got the, uh, the chocolate coconut here. Uh, you have the nice, big, thick, sort of like uh, coconut icing situation here in the middle. So those middle bites, totally different than the outside bites. I like that. It's almost like getting two cookies at once. It's almost like cheating. It's a, it's a system hack. Second place. And I go strawberry shortcake. Now, strawberry short, I really like this cookie. It's different uh, than, you know, it's not like a normal cookie that you would normally see anywhere. It's it's not something like, I've, I've never tasted one like it before. It tastes very much like a strawberry piece of strawberry shortcake, but really delicious. Number one, if you're a mathematician, you may have already figured it out. Number one, coconut egg nest. Coconut egg nest. I will say maybe my favorite Kexi cookie of all time is their coconut cream pie cookie, which again, is one of those things you better. Maybe just like coconut too much. That's possible. All right, so that's number one. One more time, throw it. Number five, Irish cream. Number four, Grinch. Number three, Almond Joy. Number two, Strawberry Shortcake. And the number one cookie from Kexi in this batch, Coconut Egg Nest. Have you started seeing the campaign signs yet around? I mean, I've seen a million Trump ones. I uh, have not seen one Biden one. I saw my first DeSantis sign the other day. Uh, we're starting to get into election time now. Uh, the really, the only, can we need to make campaign signs with this. We, have, we don't have those yet. We only have t-shirts and mugs, I think. But it says, anybody but Biden 24. Yes, it's available now at stewdoesmerch.com. Stewdoesmerch.com. Uh, the code is Stu10 there, and you see it looks like a Biden campaign shirt. You might say, hey, that person's wearing a Biden campaign shirt, and then you get close, and you're like, oh, no, they're not a loser. It says anyone but Biden24. You can pick it up now. StuDoesMerch.com. The code is Stu10. We'll see you tomorrow.